Okay, welcome to the third part of this tutorial where we're going to cover render optimization and we're also going to um, change a little bit of the fire shader itself. Now, before I move into render optimization, I do want to finish up with the shader, okay? So this time I'm going to create a new layout because previously I had a lot of trouble with the existing shading layout. Okay, so I'm going to divide this pan into two. I'm going to change this to properties, nope, not properties, shader editor. And then um, on here, I'm going to divide this up and down, come on, like that. And I'm going to leave this one and this one. Okay, so this one is going to be for render itself, viewport render. And this one is to check how it looks. And I'll tell you why. So if I now go to frame number 108, so I want to match what we see on um, viewport shading to the actual render itself, okay? So where do you see this here? I want to see that, all right? So for now, uh, for example, right now, you don't see that. You don't see this curved fire here, okay? So let's work on that straight away. So the magic really happens down here. So if I change this to 0 0.4 and this from minus 0.1 to minus 0 0.08. There you go, you can see that, that's perfect. Okay, what I also wanna change is I want to actually, this is the principal shader um, that's connected to the actual fire, okay? So here, originally I said I didn't wanna add any density but I want to add it now. So I'm gonna add a 10 here. Like for example, if I add a 100, you'll see density show up here, okay? So. Okay, so I wanna try and match what we got here. Um, this is too much, okay? So I'm just gonna put in a 10 here. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Before I go any further, I wanna go into world and I'll just take out these two because it's too dark to visualize. So I'm gonna get back in object again. All right, good. Okay, finally, what I also want to do is I have this principal shader here where we use the black body intensity. Um, so if I change this to 10, you see this show up here, okay? Um, so I'm gonna put that back to 0.25. And I want to connect the density we created here into this density here, okay? So in effect, what I'm doing is I'm using both this and this one. Because this one is technically not density, this comes from temperature, okay? So, so that's what that is. So I'm using both of these now, okay? And now you can see that looks pretty bad, and that's because this factor is 40. I want to reduce it 10 times to four. Now you can see that's a lot better. Okay, I think that looks pretty good now. Just gonna get out of it and press zero again. Let me adjust it so it fits the screen. Okay, good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do a little render, but uh, I want to show you something first. In preferences, by default, when you select GPU compute here, uh, this is what is selected. At least that's what I think is selected. CUDA and NVIDIA RTX 2080, okay? Um, so I'm gonna give it a shot as it is by default. I know it's going to take a while, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the recording and I'm gonna come back because recording takes a lot of resource and um, I know it has a significant impact on the render itself. Okay, all right. Okay, so it's currently rendering and you can see it's already passed 13 minutes and 18 seconds and it says remaining is 28 minutes and 53 seconds and that's not very good. Um, the render looks okay, uh, you know, nice fire and all, but it's just taking way too long. So I'm gonna kill this. And the next render we're gonna do is after optimization. 
But before we jump into optimization, I want to just change the color of the fire because that to me looks too reddish. Okay, so I'm going to choose slot two and disconnect it. And the way to change that, if I were to click that, okay, good. So here where we got 888, I want to change that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug in. 12, 16, and 32. Okay, so um, I've eliminated the red a lot more, okay? And I think it's taking much longer than I originally anticipated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kill this as well. Okay, perfect. Let's jump right into optimization, okay? So, okay, the first thing is go to edit preferences. As I said before, by default, I think this is what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose optics and select Intel Core i9 as well, because this is what makes a huge difference. All right, so that's the first one, okay? I'm gonna save that, and I'm gonna go into this gear icon, and let's just go through this. So. I'm not, I usually enable adaptive sampling, but I don't want to do it because I figured that it can cause artifacts. So I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to denoising, enable render, and choose optics. That's pretty good. And advanced, nothing to change here. Uh, volumes, yes, this one is a big one. So this is the globally adjust detail for volume rendering. Um, here, the lower the value, the higher the detail. Okay, so I'm going to change it to four because I think you'll find it's actually very reasonable result, but extremely fast render times. Okay. And I'm going to enable motion blur and performance. So uh, film, uh, I'm going to check transparent. This is if you have a, a um, an HDR background, you get the alpha. Um, we don't. So I should just leave it. All right. I'm going to leave it. This auto tile size. Um, it depends on the scene. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes 128 by 128 tiles works. Sometimes this auto tile size works. With this particular shot, I think auto tile tiles work. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is. And then I'm going to also enable use sp spatial splits. And that is the uh, longer build time, but faster render. And then I'm gonna check persistent data. And that is a new one that is available in 293, okay? And that's all the render settings done now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do another render and I will come back. Okay, so the rendering is finished now and it took 5 minutes and 20 seconds. That is a significant improvement and the first one um, was 13 minutes and 54 just for this part. So it would have taken around about 30 minutes ballpark and that has reduced it by 6 times ballpark. You know, and the fire looks darn good, in my opinion. Okay, good. I'm going to turn it to, sorry, I'm going to change it to third slot. And I'm just going to do a couple of more changes, and then I think we're done. Um, so I'm going to go into world, enable, uh, let me enable this. I'm going to enable these two. No, not that. I'm going to enable these two and bring the contrast down even further. Yeah, so it's darker, okay, so that is fine. And one last thing I want to point out is that usually when I render, uh, let me enable, let me enable denoising for viewport as well, okay. When I create fire, I usually use um, the source itself as a collision object, so it respects the collision and collide by itself and goes, the fire goes around it, okay? When I enabled um, Suzanne main as a collision source as well, um, it just didn't work. In Houdini, it works beautifully, but in Blender, it doesn't, so I'm not sure how to do it. Maybe in the future, I can work it out. But for now, what I'm gonna do is, I just don't like the way the fire goes inside of it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just disable that and render 
uh, the fire without the Suzanne main. Okay. Um, and also, I want to point out one more thing is that at the start of this, you'll see there are two fires here. Okay. And that is because if I go back into the layout, go to texturing, you can see there are two of them here. Okay. And that is to do with the texture itself. Okay. So as I mentioned originally, you can maybe work with uh, your own texture map by creating a wet map or generating a wet map or something like that. Okay. But I think this is good enough for this uh, tutorial. All right. So um, I'm just going to do one last render and I think we're ready to uh, do the final um, render. Okay. So I'm just going to do one more render here. Okay, so that, that hasn't uh, worked really well. So that's because I'm on frame number one. So I'm gonna have to put it back to 108 and then render it one more time and I will come back. Okay, rendering is done now. It took six minutes and 12 seconds, um, but the rendering itself looks pretty darn good and the fire is um, looking pretty cool. I'm very happy with the result, uh, except the, uh, the time. Um, time compared to the original in the second part um, has increased at least three times um, not sure why that is but I'm guessing here because there has been a hardware change on my computer while I was recording this tutorial so that could be the reason why um, not sure but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, render the animation out and I'll come back Okay, the rendering is now done. It took approximately four hours, but before I show you the render, I actually re-rendered the frame, which rendered um, at a time of approximately six minutes. But as you can see here, I, when I re-rendered it, it was three minutes and eight seconds. And that's, um, as I suspected, that was because my vent fans were stuck and the system was compensating for that. So three minutes and eight seconds was, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a great improvement after optimization. I also want to show you another um, render and this render only took one minute and eight seconds. The difference between slot two and slot one is that in slot one I disabled all the density and this is literally just the fire. And it seems like density uh, when you enable density it does take a while. So you know if you're happy with just the fire uh, which may be a little bit transparent you know that's why I didn't like it. Um, if you are happy with just the fire, then, you know, your render time will be blazing fast. But uh, with density, it's, it's a little more, but 3 minutes and 8 seconds per frame isn't that much. And this is like one of the big frames. Um, so, all right, let me show you the actual um, animation. I think that looks pretty sweet. So um, how the fire comes up here, it's just, it looks beautiful. And um, I think this is unexpected for me in, uh, to get a result like this in Blender, but I'm very happy with it. And I hope you are too, and I hope you have learned something out of this. And if you did, um, please give me a like, thumbs up, share, comment, and uh, click on the bell icon for notifications and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and other social links too. Thank you very much. Until next time, see you, bye.